Okay. All right. This was uh this is an unexpected one. I a very I, a super unexpected one. But you go by Chess Bra, right? Yes, sir. How long did you? How long ago did you decide that name? Well, I'm 37 now. I just turned 37 a few days ago. It's yeah. actually really fucking funny how I got the name, and you're gonna fucking laugh. I was 24 at the time, 23, yeah. and I was on the bodybuilding.com forums. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Oh yeah. And the MISC forums. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are. I'm back in the day forums. That's all. That's all we did back in the okay, day. Okay. Shit. Yeah. Before I social mean, media, before Instagram. You're from my generation, stuff. so you, you might have been around to see some of the stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a bodybuilding the com forums, and it was called the MISC forum. And I made a thread, and I was super skinny, fucking doy, really, really skinny. And I posted a photo of myself wearing an Ed Hardy stringer, baseball cap backwards, and just like pouting and shit, and just like doing a little selfie in the mirror. And I captioned it. Are you admiring my chest bras? Now, here's me hoping I'm going to get like everyone like telling me how good I look and compliment me. Instead, dude, it turned to about 500 pages of just fucking roasting. you. Roasting. I got yeah. roasted, dude. Had oh, my God. It was how old were you then? 24, 23, 23. Yeah. 23. So it was pretty intense. Like I just got roasted. But in, I mean, I, I get it. Like it was a really like funny looking photo. And I was like, I was kind of like skinny and shit, just thinking I was big and stuff. So I posted that. My username at the time on the forums was Ecto1986. Ectomorph1986, yeah, my yeah. birthday. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I just uh, captioned the thread that you admire my chest bras. And then everyone just started fucking roasting me, roasting me. And then any thread I would make after that, <clears throat> they would just call me, oh shit, it's that chest bra guy, the chest bra guy. Yeah. And at that time, Aziz had his nickname, Ziz, and he was popping off. And I was like, hmm, chest bra. How did, how did, how did, bra. how did Ziz get his nickname? I answered this in the Fresh and Fit, but I'll also answer for you, Bradley. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a bit, uh, another funny story. So we were kids and I could never pronounce his name properly as a kid because I had a lisp growing up. So I would <laughs> pronounce his name as Ziz with, like, with a huge lisp. And here's where it gets super weird. He didn't even call me by my name, Say it. He would also call me Ziz. So yeah. we had this running joke where we would just call each other Ziz as little <laughs> kids. And then like people around us, when they would see us like talk and stuff, they'd be like, why the fuck are you guys calling each other Ziz? Like, what the hell? And then, yeah, he just changed his name to Ziz when he started popping on, on online social media. And the rest is like kind of history. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, sure. I didn't know that because like, it came up to you. You were at, you were at my gym. When just The gym just opened. You were Yeah, you were fucking in there Steve night. let me in, bro. Did yeah, you speak to that's him? That's good. Yes, that's good. Okay. See, so was supposed to let you in. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, it was all planned. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't planned, but like. I uh, thought but, it was. I was like, oh, this is way too. Um, but a good unplanned plan because you're here now. Because I, I met mean, you and I didn't even realize. I've seen you on the internet for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't realize that you were Ziz's brother. Yeah, a lot of people don't. They think cousin or just close friend. I thought you were a friend, like a homie. Yeah. That's yeah. just from what I seen. Obviously, I didn't do enough research into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when did you guys find the gym? Because you guys, you're obviously you're older than him. Yes. Oh, you older than he would be now, obviously. Yes, correct. Um, when did you guys find the gym? Um, I started training, dude, when I was 18. I just finished high school, so my story is like just a typical skinny guy who just wanted to get some attention, a bit of respect. I was really, really short in high school. Had a growth spurt in like year 10, year 11, I was like 16. Yeah. Um, I grew up watching like Van Damme, Sly Stallone, okay. um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. These were like Force. my idols and shit. Goats. And, and wrestling as well, WCW, WWE. And um, at that point, it was like, it was so heavily ingrained in my brain, just seeing like muscle bound men that I was either gonna become a fucking homo or a bodybuilder, one or the other, like as Rich <laughs> Piano would say. It was, it was one or the other, I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had all that um, exposure therapy, like at a young age, just like watching these movies, watching these action heroes. What about what about it though, did did you like? You know, what what drew you to it? Because not, get, not everyone gets drawn to it. A lot of people are saying like, oh, it's not for me. Mm. You know? I think the whole appeal for me was, I just saw the respect they would get, and it wasn't even a woman thing, just the respect they would get from other men by having yeah. a presence and aura. And I just, noticed a lot of things even at a young age like oh wow these bigger dudes with the rippling abs and the broad shoulders and the, and the big chest like they're the ones who are like getting all the attention from like the ladies they're the ones who get the respect from the men i'm like yeah all right so life seems kind of easy maybe if i just get jacked people will take me more seriously yeah and um from a skinny kid i started at like 110 105 pounds i was like five foot six five seven i appreciate you didn't try to use kilos yeah, oh, I, I really try to do the conversion really, in my I head. Really like, appreciate that because <laughs> we were gonna have to go backwards on that shit. Well, that's I mean I've done I've done my education coming here. I'm like you know what like they do pounds, gallons. Like you guys don't we're, use. Are we we we're completely stupid when it comes to fucking the metric system. Yeah, we so I'm like I had up. to like I kind of know the pounds, but it was like about 110 pounds for for the Aussie viewers. Um, that's about like 52 kilos. Yes. 
Yeah. And now I'd say I'm probably about 190 pounds, 5'11". So I had a big growth spurt, put on a lot of weight, um, left the gym, sorry, went to the gym because um, I was getting bullied in high school. Um, I was super quiet, a little bit awkward when I was younger. So like heaps of like kids would like pick on me, like the big, sh- like bigger guys. And I was just like, fuck these guys. I'm going to show them, you know, and finished high school, bought a gym membership, started to train, um, went to like, started partying as well. Just really came out of my shell. Um, just met a like-minded group of individuals that we dubbed the aesthetics crew. Yeah. At the time you might've heard it popping off around like 2009, 10, 11. Which is, this is so crazy. This is like way back oh, before yeah. social. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So that, so I, I, I'm kind of curious, like, okay, let's go to your first point about, uh, the, the respect the women, like when did you start to notice that that, did that actually give you that? Like, did you actually get that benefit? Like, at what age did you start to realize, like, oh, I'm getting more respect or I'm getting more women? Like, did you get that thing that you thought you would have gotten? From Here's the funny thing. I always didn't really have a problem with women, even when I was kind of skinny and, like, geeky. I don't know. They must have found me charming or cute or funny or some shit because I've never really had a problem. But the type of women that I was attracting once I got, like, tattoos and put on a bit of size was, like, completely different. So to answer your question, um, yeah, I mean, I did get what I wanted and what I set out to do was the respect and yeah. the women, all that came. But then eventually that all, all that shit really didn't matter and it just became like a love of bodybuilding which is um yeah kind of where i ventured more into um after especially after like i lost my brother um i went back to basics because i got lost in the party world and the drug scene and all this and that and got mixed with the wrong crowd and uh, you know i felt had a big fall and just um you know a big big downward spiral and i wouldn't wish it on anyone dude like losing a family member and shit like it's fucking tough yeah but managed to pull myself out of it and just brought it back to basics dude which is bodybuilding man bodybuilding's always saved me in every fucking way possible through high school it saved me by giving me confidence by um you know making me more respected around my like around men women were noticing me more then when I lost my brother, bodybuilding came back into my life and pulled me out of depression a second time. Yeah. And then it's like I had a new lease of training like twice. So it's like I was like reborn twice. Like firstly, obviously getting into the training. And secondly, it would have been like when I lost my brother, I had all that passion to kind of like continue his legacy and kind of just like keep writing his story whilst also like writing my own. So yeah, let's, um, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, sure. the, the thing that I find so interesting is like this guy still... Uh, Ziz gets talked about in in respect to like Everywhere. aesthetics and in, yeah. in this community, especially online. I mean, I remember years and years ago he was so popping, like it was such a crazy thing. And like a lot of the kids who came up afterwards, like um, like the Le- what Le- Legends of Aest- what is it? What was Legends it? of Ogus? Aesthetics? Like yeah. Matt Ogus, Zach Ainsley, Ma- the yeah, Sides, and then even even like David Harrison Lade Twins. and all these people came and they kind of like after. They came after, mm. and I think a lot of them, We're I feel inspired. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I guess my question to you is like, how have you seen the industry change in regards to like aesthetics? And honestly, I'm, I honestly really like say, this question, man. It, it's yeah. it's uh, it seems like it's gotten t- like a thousand times more popular. Like it's only it's only like snowballed, even even with the, the recent like shifting of bodybuilding to like classic and yeah. more people going towards classic. Yep. But how do you think it's changed? Because that at the time when he he popped out when Ziz popped just out bodybuilding it was just bodybuilding you remember yeah exactly it and was he was just like a smaller trunks. guy mm-hmm. but still had good lines good aesthetics that's what it was mm-hmm. all about and that just like people were so like i don't think they saw a lot of that because it was most of the time like we were talking it was just the guys that you saw were big bodybuilders huge dudes and this guy came and got really popular from being like not a massive dude a mm-hmm. dude just like you know more than average for sure muscle uh, obviously had a really good look had had a you know you guys with the fucking hair thing is just blows, <laughs> still blows my mind. Yeah. You guys, I just yeah. I'll never forget the hair <laughs> yeah. and the look. So it's like, what do you think that <laughs> did to the to the culture? Because it's still like I said, people still reference that kid today and that um, guy, that man. You know, you know, obviously. Sure. Uh, honestly, firstly, that's a really good question, Bradley. And I really like these like thought provoking kind of questions rather than just like what was his his like. And it's just like I've answered this a million times. So I really like yeah. that question first and foremost. When I was around 18, the only people that we had to look up to were people like Ronnie Coleman, Me Jay too. Cutler, yeah. um, you know, don't got to say the names, like just all the greats in the bodybuilding world. There was no classic division. There was no men's physique. Um, aesthetics wasn't even, even a known thing and bodybuilding was like super niche, way more niche it was than all about it is mass. now. There was no chicks in the gym even training then they're like there were no girls in the gym i don't remember seeing all these gym bunnies now that you all see like doing little cameras and the tripods and everyone's girls, filming everything yeah, getting, and all the girls now. came out of nowhere 
and um, they've got their little whole aesthetics thing going on too. And I do feel like that's a huge influence from um, what As started and pushed in the younger days. Men, this was the big one. As was the voice for all the young dudes and all the dudes that thought they weren't genetically superior, that thought they didn't have the genetics or, you know, really they weren't the right person to become a bodybuilder. So to get that mass, mass mm, size, yeah. Because I think he showed them that, hey, like you can still look good. You can still have an awesome rig. In, and you can still live a fun life and enjoy bodybuilding. So I think he came in and brought a whole new crowd of um, young kids into the gym scene that I don't think originally would have gone into that scene unless he came in. And yeah. then the scene just completely changed. You just, you can see all these kids like mimicking him and, um, you know, in their own little ways, which is amazing to see. Like, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, before that, it was just, I would see like just the average gym Joe in, in the gym with his wife beater and his towel and his bottle. And I remember clearly night and day because I've been on, obviously, like I've seen it all go down. So it's been huge. I think like his movement and just him like blessing this world with like, you know, just his, his wisdom and his, his physique and his charm um, and his charisma managed to sway a whole new generation of young kids. And no stab at bodybuilders, but most bodybuilders live very mundane, predictable lives where they just you know they have everything's regimented so Eat, it's sleep repeat yeah. so it's super hard to people to connect with these kind of guys you know what i mean so someone like as came along and he showed that like all these young kids and insecure teenagers that hey I'm like you guys can do this too but you know what i find so interesting you're absolutely right what i find so interesting though about the whole process is that he did this on forms Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't, it wasn't like Instagram was a thing. It wasn't like, no. you know, YouTube wasn't a thing that people were actively doing. That's why it was so interesting that he got so popular on forms, like mm. across all different forms where people knew about this guy. It was um, bodybuilding.com, yeah. 4chan, MISC, um, chat roulette. Yeah, it was crazy. But the thing is, um, he was really smart at what he did. And a lot of people forget that he was the ducks. I'm not sure what you guys would call it. It's like when you're the top of your grade in every like academic subject, like maths, English, science, like. He was like ridiculously like autistically smart and like he never even studied. It was really crazy. <laughs> and he had like 300 students in his class. He'd be topping the class in every fucking subject until he found out about girls when he hit around puberty around year 10, year 11. And then, hey, sh and then shit just started to go downhill. He's like, fuck all this dumb shit. <laughs> yeah. So he <laughs> yeah. just started like fucking around a bit, getting like getting with like girls and stuff like that. And he was still incredibly intelligent, but he didn't even like study for his um, HSC, we call it, which is like your enter school that you get to go into like university. Yeah. He did no studies. And I think he got like 89 out of 100, which is like, like I studied my fucking dick off, bro. Like I, I studied so hard. I'm not as smart as him. And I got like 83 and I was like, but I, I fucking studied, dude. I fucking hated school. Dude. Oh, bro. I study. My God. I remember like, dude, being back in school, all the teachers are just like, you're not going to do shit, this and that. Like, you're not going to make it. You're going to have to like, take life seriously. Even like, dude, even like my friends and family around me, like just like let go of this whole like Ziz and chess bro thing. It's a joke. You need to grow up. Yada, yada, yada. I st stuck to my guns and... Yeah, I mean, shit. I mean, that's normal, though. I freed mean, myself from the Matrix, man. It was tough. Yeah, it's a, it's normal, though. Like, no one, especially these, like... I mean, you like, would know. I ain't going to tell you. Yeah, the, it's the oddity of it, though. Like, mm. especially our generation. Like, it was the... It would say it's the first generation that came kind of out Social of the media. internet. So there was to, more... We copped... We basically copped all the bullshit and, and set up the step, stepping stones for all these young kids now to enjoy. They don't yeah. get bullied as much as we get bullied. Yeah. They didn't go, to, go to through the shit that we had to go through. We were the first innovators including yourself to yeah. to play and and do the social media gig and yeah. then we paved the way for all these young kids now yeah it's a beautiful um, doing thing. it now it's 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 nice man it's it's super beautiful but, but even still even still even though we've done that I, and i'm grateful to be a part of it um it's no matter what you always run into people who in their especially in your close circle and family that's always like no matter even though it's like it's a now a proven thing that people are doing mm. people still just try to fucking shit on other people just because it's i think it's more so it's it's a it's just a human thing it's just basic human psychology in nature i feel yeah. like that it's always going to happen but i feel like but it's more based on the other person the other person is always going to tell you oh no it's scary it's bad because like they, they feel, can't fucking do it exactly or they're scared to do it and exactly. it's just their subconscious projecting fear like oh shit if, if this guy in my pond in my circle does this that I can't do. And I'm, Surpassing I'm, I'm, me. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, dude, like you would have experienced it. I've experienced it. I've like lost so many friends around me just cause like I chased my goals and eventually like all of them started coming true. Got my WBF pro card and ran multiple businesses. And just like, you could see like just people around me just became like kind of like fucking different dude. And you yeah. would know, you know, like snarky weed, old friends that I grew up with. Yeah. I had to or fucking entitled. get rid of them all, man. I had to get rid of them all. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't have a lot of friends that I grew up with. I have, That's I have normally a, what happens. 
I have a, I have a really solid team now, and it and took the, me a your real team long... become your friends. Yeah, you know, you barter off each other's skills. Yeah, you have friends that are videographers, that are lawyers, that are trainers, that are you know drug coaches, whatever it is. But it's right. within the industry, they're all like got their little skill sets, and you guys barter and learn and grow together. And I think that's the only kind of like friends truly that you can have um, as you get older, as you're in the business world, as you're becoming successful, because. No one's got time to be friends with stupid people that aren't making it anyway. They're not going to teach you anything. They're not going to aid anything to your life. And I know that sounds like a little bit selfish, but I feel like in this day and age, it's truly hard to find like true friendship. It needs to be yeah. some kind of like beneficial um, agreement for both parties. Yeah, and that's, that's where it gets that's, complicated. I mm -hmm. think it gets complicated there because um, a lot of people want to step into situations in which there's benefit to them, but no mm -hmm. benefit given. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And, it, would, uh, and I've the, been there. Oh, dude. <laughs> so many times, I had this bro. kid at the fucking fitness expo, an LA fitness expo, I'm not going to say his name, comes up to me and he's just like, hey man, I love you and your bro. Like, can we take a photo? I'm like, sure, no worries. Posts a photo, posts it on his Instagram, says I'm, says he, like, I'm his client and he's like some like trainer. And he's like, oh, this is my client. I'm like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I'm not your fucking client, dude. You're five foot two and fucking <laughs> 150 pounds, bro. I'll fucking eat you for meal one. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, but I, it's, it was he like an influencer guy? Yeah. There's a lot, but there's... Those cloud chaser LA types, you know which ones I'm talking there's, about. Yeah, but there's... They're for shocking, some reason, dude. They have no humility and humbleness and just like... It's like, dude, if you want to fucking milk me, just tell me you want to milk me. Like, right. don't fuck around. Right. Just be like, hey man, I want to grow some followers. But that's a thing nowadays. I've, I've realized like a lot, some of the younger guys coming up in the industry, they're just shitheads who just <laughs> shit on other people for clout. Yeah. And it's like, do you not see what you're fucking doing? Like, are you stupid? I'm like, oh. And then I had some kid actually yesterday on my Instagram. I met this guy once in Sydney. He flew from Melbourne into Sydney to like, I don't know, just to train, bumped him at the gym. I was like super nice to him, like hyper aggressive testosterone fueled dude, you know, the types. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, taking photos and this and that. And he's just like always trying to size himself up next to me and shit. And I'm just like, dude, man, I'm fucking 37, bro. You're, th you're 24. Like you should be bigger than me. You <laughs> should be training harder than me. Like these are things you should be doing. Like, and you know what I mean? And like, don't be comparing myself to me. Go fucking like playing your own pond with people your age. Like it's fucking stupid. I mean, ultimately all the, the and but that's- then, listen, look, Sorry to cut oh, you yeah, off, but ahead. this motherfucker asked me to fucking post a photo of him on my Instagram feed is like, I'll give you $2,000. I'm like, dude, I don't want your money. What the fuck? And I'm not going to shout you out. And he's like, you're not junior. You're fake like everyone else in the fitness industry. I'm like, motherfucker, you got to pay your dues before you could just decide that you're going to ask people to fucking post a photo and just offer them money. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. It's and also corny. Even if I did, you wouldn't get any fucking followers. People don't care about the physique. It's all about right. the personality. It's all about being real now. Especially nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing I think people forget is that they, and the, you know, when you talk about this, the, the hater shit, like I've talked about this a few times on the podcast, but I think kids fail to realize like it's, if you're, if you're basing your success off of tearing other people down, eventually you're, the audience that fucks with you is going to be like, yo, you're fucking lame. Like they're going to realize how mm. fucking lame you are that your only stitch is to like shit on other people or try to make other people look bad so you look mm. good. Because then there's nothing really genuine that you're giving. You're just mm. giving hate to cause negativity so that you get eyes on you. But then it's like, it's short lived, right? There's nothing to sustain it with. There's no mm. reason to be there. But the problem is with the social media is that, that shit gets clicks. That exactly. shit gets views. Exactly. Controversy. Dude, I posted a video and because I, I didn't really want to, but on my TikTok, I did a video, Natty or not, like me and Greg do say, like he's like, Natty or not, we're just throwing some names out there. Uh, fucking leave beef patty, all these names. And then fucking lo and behold, the video gets like half a million views on TikTok. I post a video of me flexing and posing like beautiful bodybuilding poses, artistic, you know, like nice shit, Frank Zane-esque. And motherfucking only get like fucking 10K likes, maybe like 50 comments. I'm like, fuck man. I'm like the algorithms against like masculinity. They don't want to see like, buffed up it's, dudes posing it, they don't want to see it it's just it's based on like it's like girls and drama yeah that's what that's what that's it's what it's sad it's, and it then, is what and it then is. everyone gets caught up in that trap you know what yeah. i mean so until they like i feel like until they make it they're gonna do everything they can these young kids to get that spotlight yeah it's tough man it, <laughs> it definitely creates like a little bit of a toxic uh industry especially this one because it is also the barrier to entry is so thin because it's like you can get a phone get in some some shape and like be like i'm a fitness guy now mm. and then your your buried entry is very low so like you're gonna have more and more people coming in and just firing shots at people to try and like lift themselves up yeah. so it just creates like yeah. a, a, a toxic environment it's it's interesting it's, I, it, yeah i wish I more kids so. realize that there's just so much more benefit to the slow game like trying to add value to people whether you're teaching someone how to train or you're you're making I mean, someone dude, laugh you're a or, perfect example of that I'd, like i only found out about you in the last two years but before i heard your name popping on the net here and there 
and then boom like you know you just came out of fucking nowhere in the last two three years like but you played the slow game oh yeah you know yeah. i played the slow game too i've been doing this for like 15 years yeah i only just got my pro card last year you know what yeah. i mean so i played the super slow game um and i think that's important what you said brad like more young people in the industry need to understand that you can't have it now 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 like and you know, even i had one of my mates come up with it on this trip with me he's like dude i just i want to get more respect from people i want to get like the respect that you have this and that i'm like i'm like man for a long time people didn't respect me yeah people, well think about your name how you got it originally like you said they, exactly they clowned you they clown the shit 500 out 500 pages Bro, I, I was like in my shell i was like <laughs> they fucking crying dude i was like oh man maybe like you know what i mean like i was upset dude yeah. but there's two things that can happen when people shit on you you either crumble or you grow yeah you know what i mean so they say diamonds are formed under pressure bro so like some, some people are made for the pressure and it just helps them to excel in life and grow but other people absolutely will just fucking become depressed and disappear and that's that bro that's that what separates the winners from the losers and that will never change yeah never no you, change, i've never bro. changed bro. I'd, I'd love to keep my inner my inner childlike personality and my, my inner nerd because i feel like it helps me also to connect with the younger people and it helps me to remind myself where i come from and always like stay humble but also be like proud of who i am and my achievements yeah absolutely yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh i want to go back to i mean i guess in a sense of achievements but um in relationship to your brother he's he had had stamped such a thing in this industry that is just like continuing now yeah unfor i mean bro I'll, I'll never forget it and uh do, do you ever because uh, you're his brother right do you ever like stress or worry or think that maybe you won't have the same sort of effect or do you even can't compare or do you you um, know what i'm saying I, I know exactly what you're saying um when i was younger i yeah i cared a little bit like i kind of wanted to be like oh shit like i also want that fame but yeah then it got to a point where i didn't really care for it and it kind of just came to me <laughs> and i didn't really want it and now that it's coming to me and like my social media is growing and growing and like my name's getting out there i'm like shit man i'm like is this really what i want i'm like i think it's nice like don't get me wrong it's, it's nice but like yeah my ideal situation now would be to be like a multiple business owner and just like disappear into the abyss and like no one knows me i need i'm like i've already got my exit strategy after i fin finish competing after i win my world world title i plan to like exit in about five years maybe own some properties and just like disappear from social media man because like to be honest man like this shit is like it's hard mentally it's yeah. draining uh it's yeah. exhausting and from loving filming content and blogging i used to love this shit bro i fucking i loved it so much i used to love yeah. taking photos and for instagram and now it's like it's become such a fucking chore that i just a good day for me would be not to be on my phone like yeah. i would just like put my phone away i'm like you know what i'm gonna spend the day going to the beach going for a fucking walk yeah going to a nice restaurant having a nice breakfast having a nice gym session going for just you know going for like a swim in the sun and just going seeing some friends getting to see my family just taking it back to basics and it just makes me realize like what's truly important and um to go back to the question um now no i don't really care but i want my message for the people that do follow me and support me to be heard and to be understood of course that um if people are chasing this kind of lifestyle to chase it for the right reasons don't chase it to be ahead of anyone else or to have clout and fame and followers do it for the genuine reasons and my genuine reasons going back again i like to go back to bodybuilding um bodybuilding continues and will continue to save my life for the rest of the rest of my days on this earth man yeah. so for me my main priority now is um to just be a world champion wbff pro and i'll uh, be uh, taken seriously as a competitor in the bodybuilding world uh the social media and all the trolling and festivals and all that kind of stuff was as his thing it was you know, he was young he was 22 at the time yeah so my head is completely somewhere else so for me to see him get the attention and fame that he gets now even more so than me it makes me happy because like i'm the bigger brother so to me it's like that's my baby brother dude you know what i yeah. mean if people are still talking about him like it makes my heart warm and it makes me smile and i hope the whole world knows his name that's that's what i want yeah yeah so i gotta ask how because i've read but how did he actually die um this is something i actually can't talk about because i promised my parents shit yeah yeah it's something that i actually do want to talk about and a lot of my followers know and probably see it in the comment section here i mentioned that i will come out with the truth in about two three years but then um due to the wishes of my mom and my dad um i kind of had to hold Cause, on to because they say it's like he, he's he, he's obviously does other drugs that aren't steroids yeah, and of course they're saying yeah. he's in a sauna he was he very open about that too, like yeah. yeah he was open about everything extremely open yeah but they're saying it was a like a like a heart attack a heart condition yes yeah so i will be coming out with the truth eventually one day um when my parents aren't around to see the aftermath yeah okay so yeah. you because it would bother so them? imagine what it, yeah it would bother them because um 
for many reasons it'll bother them but you know i've got the blessing to do it once you know once the time is right so but you're saying he did have a heart condition i can't even answer that okay okay yeah all right. yeah but um all the truth will be revealed in due time i just okay. have to yeah respect my parents wishes. Fair, so fair, can fair. you imagine my position no yeah yeah fair i was because i I've then read people shit on me they're like tell us man i'm like i no, gotta I respect my mom and dad i had to ask because yeah. i've read of course, it of but course. you never really know you know everyone wants to know yeah you know the you family know? Knows. you know how bad i want to fucking tell everyone dude yeah. Fuck, it's like dude. this burden on my shoulders bro. tell us Fuck! Well, I know. Everyone's so fucking mad right now. I know. Can it's you imagine okay. how I feel? <laughs> can you tell me off camera? Of course. Okay, off yeah, camera. We can okay. do off camera. Yeah. Um, because because I was just curious. So I've told I've told many people off camera. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, tell me off camera because I'm sure. I'm really interested. I got you. Um, and how old was he? He was 22 at the time. Fuck. Yeah, man. Yeah. Motherfucker was huge for 22 though. Imagine if he was around now. Damn, bro. Yeah, man. It's been 12 years, man. Still got the same hairstyle. Wow. Still fucking trying. The legit, wait, he, he would have, he actually my age? How? I'm 33. Uh, he would have been a year older than you, my guy. He would have been 34 right now. Oh my God. Yeah, he would have been 34. Damn. We would have probably yeah. made some dope content together. Oh, fuck yeah, for sure, man. Damn. So, yeah. okay, let's, let, let's move on a little bit. That's, I appreciate it. Obviously, I understand. I got you. Um, I definitely want to hear off camera though. You mm -hmm. guys, I can't tell you guys. Sorry, you guys. That secret. One day, uh, one day. You live in oz most of the time all yes. the time yes and how come you're out here now um so i got invited onto the fresh and fit podcast uh in Those miami my guys yeah. um yeah so they reached out to me they're like look man we're getting a lot of reception from people wanting to see you on the show um just have a chat with you i'm like cool i'm like all right i'll make it happen actually i was supposed to do it last time i came to america six months ago I won my pro card last year and then I went to Vegas, partied my ass off, just fucking had a mad time. Yeah. Uh, and the boys from Fresh and Fit reached out to me and I was just kind of like, um, just too busy, just doing my own thing, just relaxing really, not doing content. Like I just finished the comp, you know, I just got the pro card. So I was fucking, my mental health wasn't all there. I was like, I was just exhausted. I just wanted to let it all out because you've competed. So you know, man, like yeah. the off season, like for me, my off season consists of me just like partying and like letting it all out of my system, like completely. And that's you, what I've done. So, so. so you, you're, you're big into partying? yeah yeah fuck yeah. dude i had yeah. i just can't do it man yeah it's, i never it, liked it yeah i mean you, you either like it or you don't and the thing is like i like i like dancing i like to move around like i'm a bit of a people person um i like to i like the music most most of it is like i actually like the music i like trance i like hard style i grew up on edm so for me like yeah no okay i'm sorry to interrupt what drugs do you take when you party um when i party well now i'm i don't do any drugs except i smoke weed and okay. i drink alcohol but back in the day dude fucking almost everything man fucking yeah. coke pills like you name it i've done it yeah hey you ever do you ever do any mushrooms psychedelics or anything i've never done mushrooms but i've done acid i you, used to i used to oh. microdose acid it's fucking really? mad. microdose yeah, acid yeah, yeah. to have like every time i'd like get in my own head a little bit and i wanted to have like an ego death i would just like have some like i'll get i'll tell you a funny story yeah yeah i had this beautiful dog american staffy and okay. i had this two-story townhouse not a big place um not big enough for an american staffer yet big 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 ass dog I had it for about a year and i had no idea that this dog was like suffering and upset like i just i was so in love with my dog and i love my dog so much that i just didn't think there's a space and my house was too small for him and i was kind of like oblivious to the fact and i think my friends kind of like picked up on it like hey dude like your dog needs a bigger place like you know what i mean and we all hanging out one time in like my homies and we just kind of like microdose some acid and then a few hours later, I remember just like crying, dude. Just out of nowhere, I just started fucking crying. And I'm just like, man, like Max isn't happy, man. Like I could sense it in his eyes. Like he's fucking depressed. He doesn't have enough room to run around. I can't, I can't like, he needs to go at least two, three walks a day. A dog of this size, one walk a day is not going to cut it. I'm, I'm like, I'm a shit human for like not being able to look after him. Like I felt so fucking guilty, dude. And the next day, it's like just that thought popped in my head that never was there. I started looking for like a family and like a home like to adopt him you know what i mean yeah. it took me like six months but i found a nice family for him and that was super like confronting so after that i would um use acid to microdose um periodically every three four months just to have like little like epiphanies every time anything was going in my life i'd do it at good moments bad moments but do I, you I could still say, do it now no no i don't do yeah. it now now I just smoke weed yeah yeah but it was fun while it lasted psychedelics are amazing though man yeah I, wanted, like I, I still want to try mushrooms man like everyone always talks about mushrooms but i think it's like an american thing because everyone in australia just does like acid yeah like we just do the tabs so. yeah it's similar it's a, it's did you it's, ever try acid or you just do the mushrooms i've never tried acid no, no. i've done mushrooms okay. many different times they say mushrooms it's like you're the passenger and you're not the driver and they say on acid you are the driver so you can control the trip 
or so they say in the grapevine anyway yeah. yeah have you ever tried anything else like ayahuasca or anything no <laughs> fuck no it. especially after seeing what happened to fucking uh what's his name fucking good old mate connor murphy yeah connor motherfucker i guy. did it i hate that guy why bro he fucking made a video saying that how ziz really died he got a nose job in thailand and committed suicide which by the way isn't true um the nose job is true but he didn't commit suicide so yeah, he just made a video for clickbait. Um, so yeah, I we're to gonna just... we're gonna have to clickbait this video. But... Yeah, no, fuck but, you, but, Connor. Come but, at me, bro. <laughs> no, dude, I don't get it though. I mean, he's gone. That guy's kind of gone now. Yeah, he's like, oh man, he's just doing all sorts. But of I think shit. he was doing ayahuasca like really like delinquently. Like he was doing yeah, a ton like of it, not like, not yeah. I mean, like every day, like, dude. I mean, like the thing is, like I would have like I mean, I'm always down to try everything once. But after seeing what it did to him, it's like shit. Well, okay, I'm not gonna lie. So it's it's all about the container. You've you tried it. it. I've tried it. Yeah. Fuck. Talk to me. What's it like? Well, listen, bro. That's. So I'm not gonna lie. Bumps, man. I'm not gonna lie. Thought about it. The bro. Connor go, Murphy Peru? thing. No, I didn't go to Peru. I did it in here. But With I brought. The uh, yes, I brought one. Yeah. So Talk it's all me. about how you do it. You oh, know. So shit. I'm not gonna lie. I knew about the whole Connor thing too, and I was like, "That's gonna be me." <laughs> and there was a point. I swear to God, there I'm was not a point. gonna like bodybuilding anymore. <laughs> no, there was a point in the trip where I was like, "I'm gonna get stuck here." Oh my! And God. I was like, "I'm now that guy." And oh I was like, "It's God. never gonna end, bro." Oh my! God. I thought for sure that was me. I was like, "Everyone's gonna be like, yo, remember Brad? Yeah, that guy's fucking crazy now." Oh my God! I swear, dude. What happened then? But it was amazing. It was. It was like I had that moment. Did you have very, the the purge? The no, I didn't throw up at all. Damn. which is crazy how it's long really... did the uh, experience go for talk like describe it to me because like yeah no it, it went from uh nine to seven eight p.m nine in the morning yeah so the whole day you were tripping yes but your 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 Fuck reference me your reference of time is completely shifted so, you so it felt like two three hours yeah like two three hours you don't even did know did you have that out of body experience did you see like the elders and like no, in the spiritual so, realm and did you go up no, there no. and talk to all but these I, like fairies and shit? No, so so what I understand, I've done it I did it once and I did it just that day. And from doing a little bit more research, I feel like I don't know, it's almost like I felt like I like knocked off the cobwebs of like a bunch of things that I'm super anxious about in my life or like Interesting. problems. Interesting. But to go deeper, like what tip people typically do is they'll they'll go for like, you know, you talk about the jungle, Peru, mm. whatever. Mm. People will go to a place and they'll do it for like four or five days straight. Yeah. It's like so a the, proper ceremony and yeah, yeah, and that's what I did here, but it was only one and day. Not, apparently, like a lot of the people that do it at these retreats are people with like massive trauma and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is kind of why I wanted to do it. I always a part of me always wanted to just like let go of his is and just like move forward with my life so I've like obviously like i've lived my life for him and for me yeah like obviously doing like helping him with his legacy and then building my own but a part of me really wanted to go to kind of just like let go of it all and just move and start like and forward with like a new life kind of do, thing do you feel like you've but i don't want to let go of it i'm yeah. scared i don't want to forget him what I don't are you want scared to lose of? i don't want to let go of him i always want to hold him close to my heart well you can i mean you can and i think even i'm scared if i do the experience that it's going to make me realize that i need to move forward and i can't keep thinking about him and talking but about you, him but uh, i want to you but know? you have moved forward and i, I don't think it i think so too yeah. it doesn't sound like you're just like living for him you know not that yeah like, i agree i agree i might be a bit harsh on myself in saying that but i mean i think you get what i'm saying i just yeah. want like some peace because i have never gotten peace with his death Still, still never will until I, you know, I can really come out with the true message and, and then save people from dying. Yeah, I'm sure people could read between the lines, but eventually I'll, I'll speak out about everything. But that's on my back, dude, and it doesn't feel good. Yeah, <laughs> you can probably tell. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. I mean, mm. um, fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's never it's easy. A, it's a big burden to carry, my friend. Yeah, but back so, on the ayahuasca. Yeah, um, yeah. Because <laughs> like, I'm kind of, because I'm kind of interested now. You might be like swaying my mind. I might want to. No, I think you should do you it. Might, you might be like, get a call from me in a few months. This is I'll the like, thing. Hey, I'll shit, help dude, you. I'll help I'd... you too. I know all the people. Oh, shit. So this is the thing. Bradley and Chesty on Ayahuasca, bro. This, <laughs> bro. This is the thing, right? What the fuck? It's a. Uh, it you wouldn't just like completely forego who you are. Like you know, you talk about this thing that's important for you. Like it's all important. Like I said, the container in which you do it in, and the intentions you set as you go into it, right? So you wouldn't just like forego this and never have a relationship with this thing or this idea again. Yeah. It's more like it just, it makes you see yourself more truly for who you are without any sort of filter, like ego filter of like, and, and not like, you know, when you talk about ego death on acid, it's way deeper than that. It's Fuck. like, you can't, some, you, a lot of people won't be ready for that. No, they won't. You and and this is not for everyone. No, no way. It, I needed it because I was at a point in my life where like, I felt like I kept going in circles on a what lot was of. Your, what was your breaking point then to want to make you like, obviously dive into it and try it? 
um because i think that's my, important like the viewers know because like yeah, yeah. honestly like no one should just like do these kind of things without like obviously oh, like, building 100%. up to it, you know what yeah. i mean so for me i'm 33 and i've struggled dr dramatically with interpersonal relationships throughout my entire life because of my my fear of losing someone right I know why. so i lost my father the when i was six me. you lost your father yeah. i lost my bro and i have a fear of getting close to people and friends women I always keep fear. I keep everyone like at arms yeah I'm people like, get too close come near me because if i like you and i lose you it's gonna hurt exactly you know what i'm saying and it's exactly that's it so that's the story of my whole life and even in friendships obviously uh, intimate relationships with women but also in intimate friendships and like push people business away. yeah as soon as it gets too close my like good. natural instinct is like let me almost like make something bad so that i can get away from oh this. my god that's yeah bro. exactly what i do with all my relationships with women yeah i've dated some nice women and bro let me tell you i'm sorry ladies for all the fucking shit i've done i pushed them all away dude yeah and now that i'm older i'm like fuck man i'm such a dumbass exactly and so so i'm so i started getting to that point i'm 33 and i'm like i want a family and i'm like if I keep doing this, I'm going to... I've seen the pod with you saying you want a son and a family. Yeah, dude, and I want that too, bro. I don't care if people laugh at that shit. Like, dude, like you hit a certain age, you just want a fucking family, bro. Yeah, it I want I want, I want, simplicity. And the thing is, I, I just found myself, if I kept doing the things that I kept doing, I would never get there and I'd end up alone, which I'm. that's what I'm ultimately most afraid of. And that's what I'm afraid of too. You know, so so for me, that was the thing that pushed me. I was like, I found myself continuing this this sort of like rinse and repeat actions of like, being a shithead, getting like going into some other thing, having it overlap the next thing and then going into the next thing and then fucking that up and like, you know, not having trust because of all the shit that I've built up in relationships. Mm -hmm. And and I just wanted to like try to break that cycle. So, you know, the the medicine, the planet helps you to like see yourself like as genuinely as possible, like with no filter. And it allows you to really kind of like understand yourself on a deeper level that it won't allow you to like create excuses because you know when you, you you like you think of something and like you'll have like 10 fucking reasons why like you're okay in it your for yourself your subconscious behavior yeah. in, in your mind it's stop just, you from doing it. it's like it's a defense mechanism and it's just gone mm. and you, you just see this clear picture and you're like oh that's me does it last or you got to keep doing it to keep it uh so that's the thing it's interesting it, it doesn't it's not like you're always high but like you definitely have you remember the experience and what you learned from it but the thing yeah. is like do you constantly got to keep doing it to have those no, same. so it's I think like a one-time thing. Like I think you can do it once or twice and get a great effect from it. I think it's something that you can revisit uh, in time and you can continue to kind of experience. It's also good for you. It's not like a terrible thing that's bad for your body. It's no, actually like it's, full it's, of I mean, alkaloids. It's a natural plan, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we put, um, we, we put worse things in our body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like people like talking about uh, you know, the, uh, the swine flu, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But this <laughs> is actually, there's, there's actually, there's actually medicinal benefits to this actually. Oh, there like, is. Physically. Yeah. Okay. So beyond, beyond obviously the, the, the psychoactive stuff, yeah. but yeah, man, it, it does stay with you and it has changed my overall just perspective in life in general. And obviously like, it doesn't mean I'm just like, I don't ever get mad or I'm a completely different person night and day, but like, I just notice myself kind of checking myself more often. Like just a dumb example, right? A really stupid example. You're driving in a car, you cop a little road rage, and you want to be like, man, fuck this. You want to like say some shit, and I'll notice that I'll happened like, to me the other day. And I'll be sure. like, I'll go like, <laughs> I'll like say it, and I'll be like, man, what the fuck am I doing, man? Like, this is so unnecessary. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not getting me any better. It's not changing you the have situation. have that moment of clarity, that split second. It just happens faster. Like, this is a bad idea. Yeah. I should not go through with this. Yeah, it happens faster. Okay. It's, mm. So that's, the, that's one of the, I would say, okay. long term benefits of it. Um, like I said, it just makes you more in tune with yourself. Shit. It's dope, bro. You'd love it. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind trying it, but it'd have to be after comp season, that's for sure. Yeah, no, no. Imagine doing it when I'm prepping. No, no, I no. fucking hate bodybuilding. <laughs> no. Fuck this life. No, no, no. Definitely that's what not. scares me, bro. <laughs> no, bodybuilding and training, I don't think that'll ever change. It's, it, I won't lie, though. Training has changed. My my relationship to it has changed a lot just because, like, the business stuff, like, the, the, the amount of things that I do on the daily is just kind of completely changed. And when I, I feel like when, like, your business and, like, your social media really took off, am I right to say that that was the main focus of your life other than, like, overstepping the bodybuilding it originally. had to yeah it had, it had to. to be because there was no choice and it was things i had to learn and like you know training and bodybuilding in general and like trying to like get this point of physique is you have to be a very selfish right with extremely your time. selfish so in that like i couldn't do all the other things that i needed to do to be able to push forward with those things mm. the way that i really wanted to mm. so you have to shift focus and now I'm at a point where I'm like really like I just opened a new gym and I'm like okay I really want to take this serious again and it's uh, it's out. Shout out to I, Steve for the free entry. Yeah, and I bro I hate saying this because it sounds like some shit that my younger self would have told would have said to my older self now like you're a fucking pussy that like 
I shouldn't be saying I, I want to get back into it because I'm still in it and I still train, but not with the same sort of um, intensity do that you, I did then. Do you miss it, Brad? I do. The simplicity? I do. And it pisses That's what I'm scared but of. I'm, but I'm mad at myself that I let myself get this far from it. You it's know? a nut. It was bound to happen. Because you know what's it different? It's bound to happen. It's different between like going Name, to the gym. And exactly, like, dude. And like anyone who's like fucking killing it, dude, their last priority is going to be their body. They're just going to want to have a good, like, lean physique that's respectable but they're not going to chase like bodybuilding standards like physique with the diet and the pills and but the training so, and, the, it was and so, the gear and all that it changes man yeah but it was so weird for me because like part of my business and my growth and all that stuff and the companies are all related to my physique so then you have this constant identity draw. crisis too yeah you have this like who am i fuck yeah and you have this constant you know need from your audience and the people who are watching to, to like see more they want to see more to sustain to compete and this and that i understand yeah. but then like you said earlier and this is also really important i just started to like this kind of content that's a little just more introspective a little more self-reflection i also realize realize that the same people that are interested in bodybuilding are interested, interested in sport in they also interested in this kind of mm. stuff because because humans are not just that one dimensional where it's like i just want to bodybuild i just mm. want to train uh, I have been at moments in my life, but I'm also really grateful that there's there's stuff like this that people also and I think appreciate. I think that's where your big appeal comes from as well, Bradley Falls. Uh, to be honest, I think a lot of the appeal is the fact that you're very broad in um, your achievements. You're very open minded with uh, the industry and and just revolutionizing the industry, dude. Yeah, um, which is why I did want to reach out to you because I respect what you do, bro. And eventually, I want to do the same thing uh, back home in Australia because it hasn't been done yeah at all it's 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 dead it's a dead thing out there so yeah well shit if i could help you man i would for sure we'll see how we yeah. go man yeah. yeah i i i'm grateful that that i really appreciate that actually. yeah yeah i'm just saying it how it is man like you know what i mean when i see someone that i'm uh inspired by who's doing something that i want to be doing I'm, i want to ask questions i want to learn i want to get a pen and paper and just take notes yeah you know what i mean I'm, I'm that kind of guy so yeah man just from man to man just massive respect dude thank you from all the aussies real. in australia keep doing what you're doing yeah i fuck i gotta go to australia man. dude you would love australia maybe maybe you'll meet your future wife in australia shit dude maybe. huh what do you reckon what, you what do you reckon boss Dude, the Yo, girls. I know, hold on. This is funny though. Can we talk about the girls? Bro, yeah, we can. I know this motherfucker wants to go. He's like, yo, let's I go. I saw on that a trip. smile on your face, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, Bradley, take me. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, Gold yeah. Coast is like a slice of heaven, just like Miami, but without the de degeneracy. And the girls are like much more sweeter and nicer. Like, like I'm going to paint Australia for you, okay? This is so funny. I'm going to paint Australia oh, for yeah, you. Go, Picture bro. America, but with no guns. No hostility, and we're a little bit behind. So we're about 20, 30 years behind, especially on the feminism movement. So even though the women, <laughs> even though the women out there are still like, oh, we don't need no man. Like I can look after myself. It's not to the level and extent that these American entitled women are. Like the women out here are fucking crazy, dude. They're nuts, <laughs> dude. They are nuts. How was the talking on this now? How I was cannot the, believe how crazy they are. How was the Fresh Fit podcast? Did you have a nice panel? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Well, before or after the show yeah the bro i mean shit, i gotta go watch. is it up is it up yet yeah dude it's up it's up but um <laughs> holy shit it's kind of funny um i was just sitting there and like this blonde chick next to me just started flirting with me and she's like i'm a witch but this guy's really cute ended i'm a up, witch she said yeah, she's a witch she's a witch ended up banging her afterwards um it was great did she put a spell on you or anything uh, i think i put a spell on her my friend yeah <laughs> She's in love. You should see my inbox, bro. You should see my <laughs> WhatsApp messages. Hey, baby, I miss you. Yeah, Sorry, you're JD. Stupid. You're <laughs> oh stupid. God. You put a spell on her. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I gave her that great D, bro. I can't blame her. <laughs> I can't blame her, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's just, ha she's a happy girl. This Aussie guy comes over and, you know, why not, bro? So funny. More really power quick. to her, bro. More power I have a really quick question. What's it? Yeah. It's because this is like a thing that, like, the chest bra and this is, right? Yeah, the girls. What's a, what's a sick cunt? <laughs> Boys, oh, you don't know what that is, dude. I, I thought you'd never ask. Like, no. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Shit. All right. What is a sick cunt? This right. is funny. <laughs> a sick it cunt. could be like four different things. <clears throat> no, I don't know because I always hear you, it. I always hear it. And I don't a know what it actually. A sick cunt isn't something you are. It's something you become. It's something from <laughs> within. It's something just that's yearning, that deep within your heart, a fire, a spirit, a passion to want to be something more, something great. That, my friend, that is a fucking sick. Yeah, cunt. it is. <laughs> But truly, what is a sick cunt is just a man that wants to go out there and get his, that loves and respects the people yeah, yeah. around him, um, that's good to his mom, that is it's good to his dad, is a hard worker, is genuine, is nice to everyone, he just treats everyone equally, no matter yeah. what 
race background religion size they look like it's just it's just an overall cool dude that just brings good vibes that makes everyone happy around them and has a kind of like a like a legendary cool aura about him so if someone was to call you a sick cunt <laughs> sounds sick doesn't it yeah from australia it's the ultimate compliment man it's like you got to take that shit and be like thank you i love this i love this to be called a sick cunt is just like an ultimate compliment from an aussie but i know out here in america it's a little bit different yeah they don't like you the cunt be word very careful you can't just go up to something and go you're a fucking sick cunt but it's also in the approach and i think the delivery of the message like if yeah, i just yeah. go if you didn't know me bradley and you didn't like know about like this sick cunt culture and i just go hey sick cunt what's up you're like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> you're like is this guy serious but like well, if you kind of know and like i kind of approach him like yo what's up you fucking sick cunt yeah no yeah i'd be, be like all right yeah. he's like i think that's he's respect saying, i think he's saying i'm like a legend and i'm cool yeah it's respect but, uh yeah a sick cunt is um it's something like you got to build up to becoming it's like status sounds like a top g exactly top g so top yeah. g sick cunt i mean the words are very synonymous with each other yeah i'd have to say so on the panel did what you guys discuss um we spoke about uh, with the ladies what to speak about so basically we spoke about um dating um the 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 masculine and the male experience um, dating in the Western world, American women compared to Australian women, um, and just like yeah, just talking about the indiscrepancies and differences between um, males and females of society, and the gender age pay yeah. gaps and all these sort of things that were just basically throwing topics at each other, um, and it just highlighted to me how fucking stupid Miami girls are. Holy shit! Half of the girls on the panel couldn't even name three countries without thinking for ten seconds, bro. It's fucking shocking how dumb some women are and Fuck. how entitled they are like i'll say it how it is bro it's just it's shocking it's like God. light society has made it so that a woman's only worth is just their fucking appearance and their youth so let's yeah. talk about that what do you what do you think i mean that's kind of the answer to what i'm about to ask but we can go in more detail sure how do you think social media has changed like dating, dating? <sighs> social media's ruined dating bro it's kind of ruined a lot of shit it's ruined everything dude there's average girls out there they're like a six out of ten and it's like bitch you're a six you're not a nine understand you're a six and like just understand it and i feel like i feel like women can be like children sometimes you have to nurture them and take care of them and look after them if you don't lead them in the right direction and you know just like make sure they're on the right path then they can fucking lose their minds like women don't go through trauma the same as men do trauma makes us fucking rise up like soldiers over like in fucking sparta bro in the battlefields bro for the soldiers saw their fucking friends die on the battlefield that fucking wipe their tear off the face, get, get straight back on the battlefield and make them a tougher dude. If a female sees a chick die or some shit happens or fucking her, her bobby pin gets lost in the fucking bathroom, she'll have a fucking meltdown, bro. You know what I mean? It'll be, it's like the end of the world. <laughs> Women aren't made to have trauma. Women are made to be protected, loved and cared for. And that's the job of men. And I think it's changed the dating scene because women also can't handle like praise and, and, and being put on a pedestal as much as men. We have less of an ego with women when it comes to that. It's like a bunch of women are like hitting on me or hitting on you. I'm like, cool, okay, this is nice. But for a woman, having a whole bunch of simps just sliding in their DMs and you're hot, you're cute, hey babe, hey stranger, flame emoji. And like, the girl could be like a five or even a four. The girl could be a fucking whale. Girls, it's easy, man. They can just get sex whenever they want. And then all these girls start to think that, oh shit, I'm actually like better than I think I am because all these guys are giving me attention. But no, really, guys just want to fuck. That's the truth. Every guy just wants to fuck yeah so what do you so do you think girls can have guy friends hell no especially if like there's attraction there no way yeah but if they're ugly yeah easily so but do you think so, ugly then, so, then, next, so then here's the next question do you think a guy would try to be friends with a girl he wasn't attracted to like would a guy ever like, approach genuinely a without like, having intentions no i'm asking you would a guy <laughs> ever approach a girl because i i have this conversation with like girls all the time too. i have i have conversations with girls about this all the time it's like do you think that a guy who's not attracted to a girl will see a random girl and just go up to her and try and be friends with her? No. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. So fuck. That so, means we're not fr can't even be friends with like the ugly ones. Maybe I don't know. I mean, you can't. So it's like I feel like the only situations in which a guy if can have you a fuck friend them already, and then you kind of like you go, you both can get the ick for each other, and you're just like, oh shit, I see he's a sister and a brother. Okay. And then it's like, <laughs> then you can be friends with them because you've already fucked them. It's like, all right, we're already fucked. We could be friends now. Okay, so, okay, that's one version of it. But, but <laughs> regardless of my point is this, the, the main point still remains. I genuinely don't think you will find a guy who just wants to be friends with a random girl. Like his first intention while he's talking to this girl is to have sex with her. Now, if it happens and then it happens afterwards, now we're friends, there's one version, right? Of friendship. The second version is like, 
if your boy is like actually with a girl and that's like your actual boy, that's maybe. different. Yeah. But even even that is like oh, maybe that's I, just I know time. I know exactly what you mean. Even in that situation, dude, I'm the kind of guy that like if my mates have girlfriends, I'm like I don't want to know you. I don't want to talk to you because I've been in positions where like I've had mates girlfriends like fucking flirt with me or laugh at me like this guy's really funny and quirky, and it's just like it's always ended up bad for me because like it makes my friends like fucking insecure and I lost like so many friendships because their fucking girls are acting up. Even though I'm like righteous and I wouldn't go there. It's just like, I kind of try to keep a, like a big barrier between yeah. like women and my, my boys. You're my sisters and I don't want to know you too much. Like, don't tell me too much about your life and this and that. I don't, I don't, yeah. don't want to know. We're not crossing that bar- barrier. Like, I know it's like a little bit backwards, but it's just like, I just think it's like, for me, it's like a respect thing. Like, I just don't want to get to know my mates, girls on that personal level. Like as my mates, I don't want to see them as homies, like my boys, you know yeah. what I mean? They're just my boys, girlfriends. Yeah. And that's all they'll ever be. Yeah. What do you think about guys who like, I, I'm curious, guys who play the slow game where like, if they know you're dating someone and then they, oh they're like, they try God, to be friends with them. Bro. No, but so what do you think about, what do you think about guys who like, who like, they know you have a girl or they are like, that's your girl. And then they try to be like friends. Oh, what do you think about man. those guys? I think those guys are grimy and slimy, bro. Yeah. Like bottom feeders. Like, dude, like, just be honest with a chick. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to be going, like, for your mate's chicks or looking at your mate's chicks and waiting, waiting for that right moment. When they, When's she going to break up? When's she going to leave this guy? Like, I'm going to I'm gonna take a stab. Like, dude, that's like predator behavior. Like, literally predatory behavior. There's yeah. so many women out there. Fuck, you ain't going to be looking but at your it's, mates. But it's also weird how sometimes girls. women will rationalize. Like, no, it's just my friend. It's like, okay. They're fucking dumb. Women are dumb when they say that. Bro, like, no. <laughs> no, women keep orbiters around them. I've seen it happen. I've fucked women and then I've needed like a lift home and they've called their orbiter and the orbiter will come, pick me up, take me back to my fucking house, give me a fucking sandwich and then drive home. And then I'll ask like my chick mate that I'm fucking, I'm like, are you fucking this dude? She's like, nah, nah, nah. He's just like obsessed with me and he just takes it and does everything for me. So women keep these guys around for mutual benefits. They get gifts, they get trips, they get fucking car rides, they get anything they want. And these are like what we call simps. Like, you know what I mean? So I think yeah. guys like that are fucking pathetic. If the girl's not fucking you, why are you staying around for? Yeah, they just- Why are you think, wasting your time? They think they're tired. They think like, I'm gonna, if I just do enough good and I'm no, nice enough. No, because she sees you as pathetic. It's like, crazy. Dude, like I was driving and like, I was like, I slept with this chick and then like, she called up one of her guy mates to come drive me back. And I'm like in the backseat, like blind drunk. And I'm like, he's just like, and then he's just like fucking sitting there and like they're having a conversation. I'm like in the backseat, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is so weird. I'm like, this guy's getting cucked and he doesn't even know it. I'm like, this is horrible. I kind of felt sorry for the dude. Should have said something right I, when At you the got, end, I said, said something, something, I said something to the female that I was banging. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I like that driver. He's a nice guy. You should give him a fucking chance. Yeah. I'm sure he's like, like he's doing all this. He's probably treat you better than I ever can. Like, fuck. Dude. But, you know, it doesn't why, so work why, like that. Why it was you, like toxic dudes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Why yeah, do you dude. think that is? It's fun. And do you think it is? Okay, so... Maybe toxic is not the word. It, no, it, it's the word. Oh, it's definitely so? the word. It's definitely the word. The, but Are I we toxic, it, Bradley? I, I have been. And I, I totally have been. But Shit. I'm moving out of this. I'm moving I'm out of trying, this. I'm trying, man. I'm Bro, trying. I, ayahuasca. I'm moving out I'll of this. I'll see you after my comp. I swear, I'm not kidding. I'm I'll fucking, see you after my comp. You're going to walk me through this shit. I'm changing my life, man. I can't be there anymore. Oh I can't do God. it. I've, I've done too much of the bullshit. I don't want it anymore. I hate it. I literally just- I like that. I want I want a woman. I want a family. I want to move forward. That's Dude, all I so want. So do I, but it's fucking hard to find a normal female. Yeah. I'm thinking of just getting like an incubator, like, you know, RussianBrides.com. <laughs> and just like, it, like Ronaldo did it. He bought an egg for a hundred, like he probably paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. No one knows who his first fucking kid's mum is. Like, no one knows. I reckon it's a clone. I, I already said this to myself. If I can't, f- I'm 37. If I can't find like a wife, wherever you are out there, wifey, stop fucking around. Yeah. I want you. I want to propose to you. Stop fucking around. I'm waiting for you. Please. Yeah, seriously. Just though. drop the bullshit dude that you're with now and come to me. Yeah. Anyway, but I think like, I mean, I already told myself like, dude, if I hit like 40 plus and I don't have kids by that time and I'm making like good money, I'll probably like, I'll probably get like a surrogate and I'll get like a big, like an egg with like, of like a Scandinavian, Norwegian, big broad shoulders, six foot tall, you know, blue eyes, <laughs> strong jaw. Dog, this shit's comedy, <laughs> strong bro. Strong jaw. I respect uh, that. You know what I mean? Like, if I I'm going to, if that. I'm going to kid, I don't want it to be a little runt of a litter. Cause I was a little, <laughs> runt, I was a little fucking runt growing up and I know what it felt like, man. I had to fucking like jab all this gear and eat all this fucking food, go through all this <laughs> bullshit just for fucking people to be like, oh, I guess he's okay. No, I want my kid to be born a fucking Chad, just to be born fucking <laughs> Jack. Born a Chad. Just born broad shoulders, big, tall, to have the biggest advantage in life. Yeah, like, it's fucking crazy. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it is I mean, interesting how like all that stuff does add such a benefit. Of course. Yeah. Dude, look, like for example, like like a guy who's six foot four, a guy who's five foot six, a guy who's six foot four is infinitely just 
gonna have more respect for men more dating like options with women yeah just for the mere height of a few inches it's crazy yeah I, another thing i was on this panel and we we're talking to these girls and they're like pick three things you want in a guy uh six figures six inches below or high or above or six foot tall good looking um or some other things yeah i can't remember they want everything they had to only pick three yeah they had trouble picking yeah yeah the main ones they picked were looks money and height which was I found surprising that dick size wasn't there. Very surprised actually. But those are the main three ones. And all those girls were like six foot, six foot, six foot plus. And then I told the girls, I'm like, the blonde chick that was next to me, because she was like so, really into me. And then I was like, oh, I guess this isn't gonna work out. I'm five eleven and a half. I guess I didn't make the cut. She's like, oh. She's like, no, you're still good. I'm like, I'm really not five eleven and a half. I'm actually five eleven. I was testing you. She's like, <laughs> oh. She's like, no, you're like, you're taller now. I'm like, no, no, I'm f barefoot. I'm 5'11", man. Like, you get the hair up though. I guess the height and the hair and the posture can make me seem taller. But I mean, barefoot, like I'm like, yeah, I'm like 180 centimeters, man. So it's like, and then I told her that. I'm like, I don't make your cutoff. I don't meet your criteria. Guess this won't work. So it just proves to you that women don't even know what they want. Because then she fucked you. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> bought me cigarettes, bought me like weed. Like, like yeah, you still smoke cigarettes? He's the funny Bro, thing. you gotta stop. He's the, I know, I know, I know. Oh, don't drill me for this, please. Fuck, but man. In my defense, I only smoke cigarettes and I'm fucking weird, yeah? So whatever. Like, I only smoke cigarettes when I'm like traveling overseas because like the fucking long flights, Bradley, stress me the fuck out. <laughs> I don't smoke at you home. You sound like my buddy Steve when I'm he I'm a bodybuilder. Like, I don't smoke, dude. So when I'm like traveling, I get super stressed. I just get a pack, like a deck of ciggies and I just fucking smash them. And then I get back home and I stop. You, know, you don't smoke at all. No, I don't smoke at all. Except like obviously marijuana, but that's like different. So. Like like you're talking about like a spliff or like in a bomb. Um, or... No, like in Australia we call them cones. So we mix uh, like, tobacco and exactly. Yeah. And I know here in America you guys don't do that because every they... time I've done that, everyone's like, "Dude, you're ruining the weed. What are you doing?" I'm like, "This is how we smoke it back home." Yeah, so so some some like... people do that here still. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So we do like eighty percent weed and twenty percent tobacco. So I think that's why I'm probably always craving tobacco. I think eventually I'm gonna have to cut out. Yeah, but I enjoy smoking it like that, man. So I don't know, man. So like, yeah, cigarettes are fucked though. It's different. Vapes it's just, are even worse. You guys yeah, are all yeah, vaping yeah. out here, man, and putting electric smoke in your lungs. Yeah, we gotta stop. We gotta we gotta stop. You know kids what? We just, everyone's just gotta stop smoking. Hey, like that shit's just bad. Even weed is bad for your lungs. I think like yeah. anything that you're inhaling can't be a good thing. Yeah, unless you're smoking like mullen, which is good for your lungs. It's a plant, but what's that? It's a it's a plant. Mullen. Mullen. All right, boys. Quick interruption from the podcast. Uh, one of our sponsors, Roman Swipes, that's right. I've talked about this in the past. Listen, if you guys have a hard time lasting long enough or feel like, yo, you just want to last longer, I don't know what it is. Obviously, to each their own personal preference, it's all good. Here's the deal. Roman Swipes has your back. Basically, all you have to do is like take this little thing out of this little packet and, you know, before in play time you give yourself a little bit of time swipe swipe don't 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 do it too close to play time you gotta do this like a little bit before but yeah it's gonna it's gonna help you basically endure you know more time so there you know you'd be able to enjoy your whole experience a little bit more so give roman swipes a try if you guys want to try it right now go to ro.co slash bradley again that's ro.co slash bradley to get ten dollars off your first order and free two-day shipping don't pass it up do it right now support your boy let's get back into this podcast yeah you gotta tell me about that later yeah Sad, that that'll, you might want to put that in with your stuff you're gonna smoke super consistently i'm not trying to tell people to do this but it will actually ease interesting yeah okay. i'll tell you about it after Mullen, definitely because yeah. i don't want these fuckers to be like yeah, I'm gonna, you know how these impressionable they're gonna are, be like i'm gonna fucking get some mullen i'm just gonna keep bradley smoking said these. to get some mullen now yeah. chesty's doing ayahuasca i'm gonna do that too <laughs> do as yeah. we like say don't do as we do yeah yeah yeah. so do you have fun now or do you have fun did you have more fun then when you first started or more fun now in the industry dude the crazy thing is i'm actually having more fun now yeah and i think that's partly because i'm more successful now and i'm making more money and because of that i can do the things that i've always wanted to do like traveling i really love traveling yeah um i like to do nice things for my parents like i help my dad um with paying off his teeth he got like his um top and bottom uh implants for his veneers. teeth. he's a bit old yeah, yeah. no not veneers the actual implants so oh shit super pricey and just being able to like even like contribute and help with that like made me feel super happy i actually spoke about it on the pod with fresh and fear and i just i broke down dude the same way you did about your father because like my dad's fucking done everything for me my mom and my dad bro they sacrificed so much bro they came from russia two immigrants yeah you know we came here with no english and they did everything man and then to have one of their sons fucking die and then the other one 
probably given a hard time through all the trauma and bullshit. It's just like, now that I'm a bit older and I'm making a bit of money, I just want to like make them happy. You know, I want to buy nice things for them. I want to take them on holidays. I yeah. want to make sure they're smiling. I want to take myself on holidays, travel a lot. So I think I'm more happy now because I have that freedom. Yeah. Mm. Was it, <clears throat> was it what you thought it would be having more money, having more? Um, not really. Let me tell you. Um, it got to a level where like, like I'm making good money, not as much as you, but <laughs> I'm making decent money enough for me to not have to work ever again and just kind of like keep living on my businesses online. Like I got my clothing business. I got like a male cosmetic business that helps like guys like with their balding and stuff. Yeah. It's called aesthetic cosmetics. Like I know you like you did the transplant. Hair transplant yeah. I got to go back to Turkey, do it again. I can help you with that stuff, man. I had a hair transplant. Would you believe it? Damn, you did? Yeah. Fuck. They did a good job, right? You got a lot of hair. Well, yeah, we'll talk later. I can help yeah. you out. I got okay. all the products, man, that can help you, man. So I do that for men because a lot of men are like super scared of like, you know, just like looking after their hair, their skin, their, their beard care. So I've got all these things for men like skincare, beard care, hair care to help men to look and feel good and be confident. So that's one of my brands. And basically what I'm saying is like, yeah, when I started popping off and making a bit of money, um, it was good, but I'm at the level now where like I have the opposite thought. I'm like, you know what? It's going to be scary if I ever get to a level like, say, you, for example, where I'm making like stupid like money because I don't know how I will be. I honestly don't trust myself. <laughs> what do you not trust? I don't like, know, man. I think I'll do some crazy shit, man. I don't know. Nah. I just, I think I'll, I'll think the bodybuilding will not be as taken as seriously. Yeah. I think that will be like, obviously like taking like a, like a backpedal to everything else I'm doing. And that scares me because I love training. Um, I think partying will be a lot higher a lot more frequently more overseas trips more this more that and then i don't know man i just i i kind of i don't want to make too much money i just want to make a good amount of money that i don't have to work and i could just do what i want and eventually enough to support a family and a wife but i don't want to be like a multi 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 millionaire or even like anything like above that because that I, I don't know i think when you have more money you probably just have more problems so i want to be at a level where I'm like doing really, really good, yeah, but not too good. I know that's a, and that's a crazy thought to have because everyone wants to make more money, yeah. But I'm like on the mindset that, you know, if I was to choose, like for example, if you gave me an option, say, it, would you rather make like two million a year or fucking a hundred million a year? I kid you not, I promise. Like maybe for the first year, I'll take the hundred million, and then after I see how much it fucks me up, I'll be like, you know what, man, I'll just stick to my one or two million a year. Yeah, money is an interesting thing because it is true. More, more money, more problems in the sense of like. You when guys you know make, the Drake song. When you make, oh, really? When you make more <laughs> money, it's like you. At, you have to think about everything well, you do. Yeah, you have to think about it, but also there's upkeep with everything. Mm. So if you start to extend your legs and you like have more things that Dude, you need accountants, lawyers, this, yeah, that. Yeah, fucking, you need. It's like you'll need you contracts. Protect yourself, you need, contracts, insurance. People don't understand, man. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? a, it's a it's a lot more than I thought it would be. Obviously. You know, I didn't. I, and, and then a lot of people stop thinking for themselves. They get managers, this, that, second in charge. And then you get taken people advantage packing of. The, people packing their bags, fucking wiping their ass for them. Yeah. And then before they know it, they're like big babies with lots of money. Like that's the last thing I want. I worked yeah. hard to get to where I am, and I don't want to lose that um, rawness to me through through money. Yeah. You know? No, it's an interesting thing for sure. Money's money's definitely it's tough. It's tough. Sometimes I mean, what have, do you think of my mindset and and how and what I think of money? I mean, do you think that's Obviously, that's not the norm, but do you think that's the right way of thinking? Like, I mean, there's no right way. That's the thing we talk about money. I guess, there's no exact I guess, yeah. way. Everyone's it's all different. really what you want. I mean, there's always... Some people prioritize money way too much over other things. Yeah. Though. There's always a way to balance it like for your best benefit. I mean, I think the problem is when people make a lot of money and then they overspend and they don't realize that they're overspending, specifically when people first make money and then you get taxes hit you, but oh people my God, will overspend. <laughs> they'll overspend and then they'll go taxes and then they'll go like wait oh i have to pay this bill because like they maybe start to spend even beyond where above they could. their means yeah. yeah which is like you can obviously you have money you could spend it but i think people get too like overly excited especially when you first start making money mm. where you could have a bunch of money and live very minimally mm. and be very very happy and then have you now you have no stress because you have such a large well, cushion dude, that that's that's i'd say that's where i'm at like i'm not gonna say i'm like killing it like i'm making good money but enough to like you know be happy and just relax and yeah. not have to be stressed. Yeah, it's, that's it's good. The, I mean, that's... <clears throat> I've that's got mates key. who make more money than me and they're like, we wish we'd be in your shoes just taking photos and videos and just being like a like a, like an icon, celebrity, whatever, and just like training and just competing. And just, yeah. I try to do everything minimally because stress is fucking huge, bro. Stress is a killer. And I think people don't talk about the stress of also like making a lot of money and running a lot of businesses so for yeah. me like i want to be in the game for a long time you know what i mean i look at people like i was saying like greg Dusay and all these guys and 
I seek inspiration from them because like, I'm like, oh, this guy's 47. And he's like fucking putting me on show in the gym and on his bikes. I'm like, this is what I want to be when I'm 47. I want to be as happy as this guy. Yeah. I want to still be partying like this guy, traveling with my partner. Great parties? Wife. Yeah, man. I didn't know that. Hell yeah, Greg parties. That's bro. what's up. Fuck. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Damn, yo, party, I can even get Greg on this podcast. I'm, you have to, dude. Greg, I got you on two podcasts, bro. What is he? When, <laughs> when, when, when does he come to... Uh, um, dude, he's, he's Canadian. He's He can't come to America because um, of some fucking felony from like years ago some steroid thing man oh i remember that yeah but he's trying to fix it now and because he's looking to go to like 80 like his wife like his partner's looking to go to adc and i'm oh he parties oh yeah oh i didn't know that yeah oh yeah yo that's what's up shout out greg i'm like greg like come to adc vegas bro like let's all fucking party bro he's like i can't come to america i'm like dude fix that shit and let's fucking let's run amok dude it'll be awesome yeah that's dope i need to get him on here and i think that's cool i think it's important i want to pass this message on like to everyone watching this um it's important to allow yourself to have fun yeah you know what i mean and even to you bradley like just to an older bro to like you know a younger bro I, I tell you man it's like i know like business is like important you get to this level you have all these responsibilities and stuff but i feel like always remember like that inner child in, in you to have that fun to have that uh, yeah. freedom and to be able to sometimes detach and just really just let loose because i feel like that would make you work harder and sometimes give you that mental clarity and focus to actually keep carrying on with the businesses and the like empire that you're running yeah, I appreciate you know, that, man. It's I good advice. You. It's also funny though, too, because we we let loose on the grand opening day. We were oh fucking yeah, I saw drinking. the videos. You and yelled then, at you yelled at my mate. You get out. That was <laughs> that was my Aussie mate, the Asian dude. It was fucking funny. So so we're we're, we're it's funny because I don't know if you saw the the drama that happened, but like people were saying they were mad because the influencer thing. Yes, oh, exactly. Yes. Can I yes. finish before you say anything? Go ahead. Go ahead. Everyone's always cutting off people and cropping these little shorts and then taking things out of context. I guarantee you, someone's gonna do it with my clip. You'd be like, "Chest is a misogynist," but yeah. it's like, no, dude. I'm just passionate, and this is how I speak. I'm just trying to make my point. Yeah. But dude, like, no, man. Like, I know what you're doing, dude. Like, and then they cut that little clip and try to make you look like a bad guy. Yeah. Fuck that shit, bro. It's, caught, it's so it's just it's what it is now. On the it's internet. social media, dude. They just yeah. like drama, and everyone's like, "Oh, Bradley's talking only influencers only." It's like, no, dude. no, because you get the whole point was of course. we invited influencers to come. No shit, specific ones wanted them to stay. Everyone else leaves, so more people can come in. Period. Yeah, yeah and it was just like this spun like is a bad guy. Yeah, no shit, but like that, like it was described, it was saying, but yeah, they they really did try to make you out to be the bad guy, bro. Yeah, and it's like shit. Now I gotta fucking defend myself. So you gotta go and make a fucking video and be like, no, this is taken out. It's same with like Andrew Tate, dude. You know, they've yeah, they've taken everything he says out of context and trying to make him seem like a bad dude. But you know what? Deep down, I think everyone knows that a guy who's like that high value doesn't need to treat women bad or doesn't need to be fucking holding anyone hostage. Just probably has women at his feet. And it's probably quite like a bit of a gentleman, if anything, to women and like he's the boys. Well, I met him. He was super sweet, super nice. There you go. Yeah. There but you go. The the prop the hard part with this situation with Tate is like this is in his past. You know what I'm saying? Everyone has a past. Yeah, of and course. And when you get super famous, is another thing. Those people in your past that you burnt, you know, that girl that you slept with at a party and then one night stand that was like regretting it's going to come after you and say that you raped her. All these things are going to come yeah. out because yeah. people want your money. People want your fame. Fame. People want your status. Yeah. And it's like, when none of us are clean. Everyone's like done things that that is a bit questionable. But like end of the day, like a lot of these things come and then bite you in a way because these people then come attacking you, trying to trying to take your money, trying to take down your empire. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. You know, like Bro, I've been there. Not yeah. in that the same line for Tate stuff, but in so in so many of my own ways in this industry and people. Oh yeah, I feel you, dude. Completely. It's tough. Myself, myself included. So you just you have to have your wits about you. Yeah. And you have to be super self aware. And I think um I think that's important as well, um, for the viewers to understand. Uh self awareness, don't let yourself get used. Um, know your value and know your worth. So let's talk about that. It's tough because I've put myself in positions where <clears throat> I've even protected myself contractually to not get used. But, you know, in good old California, still get United, used. you still even get used. If, even I, I guarantee you right now, even though you don't know you're getting used, there's probably 10 people around you that are smiling assassins that are probably fucking you in the ass and you have no idea about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. dude, it's like, and it gets to a level where like, you know, you get that level of fame and I've like, I've hanged out with huge influences. Like, not just in America, like in Brazil, I've hanged out with this guy named Taguru. He's got like 6 million followers. He's making a killing, drives a Lambo and Ferrari, lives in the fucking outskirts of like the, of like the favelas in Brazil. And he's too scared to move from the favelas because he pays off all the favelas so they leave him alone. It's dope. 
you know so yeah. he gets that respect from the gangsters that hey this guy's like made a fuckload of money but he's not disappearing to the rich areas in, in sao paulo brazil he's staying like where he grew up he's sticking to his roots so because of that he doesn't get fucked on but he has to do all these things so he doesn't get fucked on you know yeah he has to pay off all these people he has to have all these cameras set up you know what i mean it's like at the end like it's like who the fuck can you trust yeah you know what i mean so you just when you get to that level you just you just got to be a good person man and um it's tough so what i was going to say was it's tough because it's got to be true <clears throat> i've been in situations where i've even tried to protect myself i've done my best in situations i've like done as much as i could and i still get fucked so then it, it sucks because moving forward you start to go like damn like should i do this again should i extend myself again should i help more should i give more and it kind of puts me in a position where like i'm like fuck like am i just gonna get hurt all over again you know because i've i'm like an active like lawsuits with people who are fucking taking advantage God. of me to all hell that's and it's just me, like man. yeah and it's like take i'm talking about like imagine completely helping to change someone's life like zero to a hundred and then they try fuck you and then they, yeah and then they fuck you i'm talking about like a like imagine zero dollars to a hundred thousand dollars a month damn man. Type you shit. helped him that much yeah i helped him that much that's fucking disgusting i hate that bro and I then and then shit. they go you didn't do enough wow and and then every other person that's in their life is How also does that make you feel and every I'm other getting angry for you and, and i just fucking met you and every other person that's in their life was some derivative from me and also put in their life yeah. through me so you made them you helped them yeah you were trying to a to crazy help. degree yeah so you've got a good heart you want to lift up the people around you you want to lift up your circle you want everyone to eat at your table you want your homies to eat but then some of those homies aren't, aren't loyal and then shit like this happens yeah. because like what good is success if it's all by yourself yeah i mean well i had I me mean, dude you know that's I mean? the thing yeah of course but i i had a contract i even had a deal and they still fucked me <laughs> so it's like you even you, you i knew what i was getting into because i've had other situations in the past where i helped people change their entire business like go from zero to fucking same thing mm. but i made a bad deal for myself and it's it's fine like i'm not mad but so then i move forward i'm like okay let me make good deals for myself moving forward if i'm involving these people yeah for sure and i still got fucked man Fucking still hell. still said i didn't do enough and it's just like that shit hurts because even on the on the <clears throat> the back side of that imagine doing everything like on the front end business wise getting money getting all this stuff for them all this popularity mm -hmm. getting them all these followers all this shit and then even on the back end being for their being there for them personally when they're dealing with real heartfelt real things mm -hmm. and i'm in that i don't have to do that i don't need to do that but i'm doing that because that's that's also like i care you're a good person and then you get turned around on and they just treat you like, yo, you didn't do enough for me. Thanks. I'm going to go then, just continue. And then what does that do? It makes you cold. It makes you shut off. Yeah. And it makes me go people like, people wonder damn. why, you know, why we are the way we are. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it makes me go like, damn, should I, should I continue to help or reach out or like, yeah, give? Or, or it's like fuck helping people. Cause look what happens every time I try. Yeah. And yeah. I've been in situations even on social where like I've, I've even extended myself to help people and it gets spun on me as if I'm some bad guy doing some dirt. It's just crazy as shit, man. Like, Damn. I've had a really, this this industry and this social media, I've had a very tumultuous, like, fucking 12 years, man. Mm. Like, I think, you know what? Hearing hearing a bit of your story, Brad, Bradley, I, I think we're not too different, bro, in our, in our mindsets, dude. We've, we've had to go through a lot of fucking shit to kind of, like, prove ourselves in a way. And even when we've proved ourselves, I feel like it's still, like, um not enough for a lot of people. Like what? What do you got to do for the, like all this bullshit to stop? Like, well, you got to make fucking fifty gyms, and then well, people are gonna like it. You got to yeah, you gotta open well, up a fucking church for someone. The thing that I realized. What do you got to do? Bro? Yeah, or, yeah. Or is this shit gonna always fucking keep happening? Yeah, well, that's the thing that I realized, and I realized this after this was years ago when this happened to me. I remember at one point I got just just completely like dragged on the internet over some shit that was never true. Mm. I got dragged to this crazy degree. And I remember every year prior to that, it was like love, 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 love. And the content I made was about, about my life, about my journey, about my training. And it was all giving, teaching, showing, talking, yeah, all good. And then the minute someone could frame me as a bad guy, all, it's it. like They'll everything it. went out the fucking window based on what someone said. Dude. Just like I could sit here, like if I sat here and was like, you beat up your girlfriends, I could just say that and I could fuck the rest of your career forever. And they'll That's be like, crazy Brad, and so yeah. that happened to me where everything I did just was like, I felt, I felt like even though it wasn't this way entirely, my heart, and it made me not want to do social media anymore. Yeah. I was, I was like, yo, I want to stop yeah. because I was like all these years of doing this shit and this whole climb now up you see, meant nothing. Now you see why I want to exit strategy. I want yeah, of peace. Course. I want peace, dude. Of course. Uh, no one wants to go in their mid forties. But I've also, I just be like fucking hammered. All I, the I also don't really want to say I just want to exit. I want to get out because I realized no matter what I it's do, it's still gonna be a part of you. And yeah, it's and, still and keep happening. And no matter what I do, like 
good or bad, good, 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 bad, doesn't matter. People are going to love me and hate me for who I am no matter what. Yeah, that's and it, so man. it's just like, I'm just going to be that. Just you got to be yourself, end of the day. And it's, yeah. it's the same with anyone uh, in this space or any industry in general. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's not not, not really pertained or just uh, locked into fitness. Uh, it could be any industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, it's just something that uh, I feel like a lot of people just got to understand and uh, respect and just see for what it is. Yeah. And for the people listening, like whether you're trying to be on social or not, like this, this kind of shit can happen in your personal life just with friend circles and businesses. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of like understanding that not everything that happens to you is because of you. Mm. And this is hard because a lot of people take response. This happened to me. Oh, what? Like almost like self, like self infliction. Like what did I do wrong? Yeah. Like, and I think, you know where that comes from? That comes from like, and I, I don't want to like pull on some heartstrings, but I think that comes from like, you know, like your dad abandoning you and like my brother, like dying on me. We were always like, we're always like trying to please. We're trying to people please, you know, yeah. we're people pleasers. We try to help people. And uh, we would try to make people smile through our own ways and our own means because we have the platform to be able to do so. But, you know, sometimes when we, we, we do it and then it gets taken out and sh thrown back at us, it's just like, fuck, like, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like genuinely within your heart, you're like, I'm actually just trying to help guys. Like, yeah. And then how are you supposed to feel aside from feeling shitty? Yeah. Uh, um, so, so where do you go here from, from here with content? Obviously you want to get the, the, you want to win the world. Yes. The world title. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is WBF. WBFF. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And, um, where do you go from here as far as content wise? Like what kind of stuff do you like? Obviously you get, so you get this fitness content. Do yep. you just stop or do you make fitness content? Do you evolve? Do you change content? Like, what do you see yourself doing in the next like five years? Not five years. Five years is like, I not, hate this question, but I guess I just talking about content wise. Content, not competing in the bodybuilding side. Yeah. Um, shit. That's a good question. Um, I still see myself making content. Um, because as crazy as it sounds, Bradley, even though this shit is the fucking absolute going to be the absolute death of me one day and my mental health. For sure. I like me it. Too. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like this. I like this. I like, I like everything about it. I like the fucking lights, I like the plants. I even like this. What the fuck is this? Gym I'm weed. I'm going to drink one of these. Yeah. Like I just, I like everything about it, even though it's hurting my soul on the inside. <laughs> yeah. It's so fucked. You know what I mean? Like, I'm crying. That's on the so inside real. Here, but I like it. I don't know why I like it. Maybe the trauma has defined me and I, I like pain. Bro. Maybe that's why I'm a good bodybuilder and I, I think... train hard because I like to hurt. Maybe I want to feel the hurt. Maybe I want to feel the pain. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe yeah. I want myself to feel the pain of like losing my bro so I don't ever forget losing him because it's like a trauma thing that I can't let go of. And yeah. you know, maybe it's the same with, with you and your dad. Yeah, but it, that's what I'm starting it's to like realize. A, it's like, I want to prove everyone. I want to prove to my dad, this shouldn't have happened. Yeah. You should be alive. You should have seen the man I became. Yeah. You know and, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, and it's I'm a getting chip to a, on the shoulder kind I, of thing. I'm getting to a point now though, where I'm starting to realize I need to change that. You can't. Yeah, we have to let go. Yeah. We got to let go, dude. Yeah. Shit, we need a fucking therapist. <laughs> this is it, dude. This is our therapy oh right now. Oh my God. This is our therapy right this now. This feels good. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Oh where where have you been, dude? Dude, I, I don't needed know. you here. I know. You gotta I'm come to America more. Mate, Fuck. You gotta come to Australia. Yeah, I Holy will. Holy shit. Ayahuasca after August. <laughs> yeah, we'll do but it. I swear to God, if anything happens we'll to me, it. my fanboys are coming for you, man. What's then, gonna happen? If oh, I on ayahuasca. To Connor no, no, Murphy. No, 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 no. You'll be good. Are you, okay, 100%. Promise, promise me? Bro, I promise. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do okay. it. Because okay. I was so afraid of it. All right, okay. Like, I was like, yo, this is I'm it. sure you got some good connects for it. You, 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 oh, you, yeah, you, the you, You're getting me the right people, not these fucking shamans that go rape everyone. And all no, no, up. no. Those are the cock shamans. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I don't want to cock shaman up my ass, dude. No, 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 That's none of that. That's the last thing I want to wake up with a sore asshole, bro. Fuck. No. I'll kill a cunt, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> Crazy, you got, bro. these people are solid. Super yeah, solid. Yeah, In you, America? Yeah, they, I mean, well, they flew out here. They're from Colombia. Oh, okay. They're proper then. Yeah, super proper. They don't even speak English proper. Damn, and yeah. you did this on your own, or you had some homies like doing uh, it? I had a friend help me out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, you'd love it, bro. Okay. I got you though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You might be getting a call from me. Yeah. After hell my yeah. Comp You'll love it. When but, I'm back to uh, a human being. Yeah. Um. So 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 you you want to keep making content? Is Correct. it going to be fitness related? Um. I don't think so. I think I'm going to move away from fitness, and I'll always be in the fitness world, and I'll always remain a fitness icon, whatever you want to call it, influencer. I don't fucking know the words yeah. use these days. Um, but I think I'm going to move away from the fitness content eventually. 
I mean, how many videos can you keep doing? Chest bro trains legs. But that's how I chest. I'm not gonna lie, man. That's how chest I chest trains arms, and then you collab with a few people. Chest bro trains arms with Joe Blow. Yeah. Chest bro doing calves with fucking John Smith. Like, bro, you can only do so many fucking training videos until you get fucking sick of it. Yeah. I'm at the point where I'm fucking sick of like seeing myself on camera. I'm like, fuck this guy, and I'm like <laughs> looking at myself. I'm like, fuck you. We're sick. It's a problem. Yeah. And then I'm so I don't want to be doing the same content over and over and over again because it's not stimulating my mind. Yeah. Maybe I might. Get back on my podcast. I started a podcast. Um, it flopped, <laughs> and like, and again, I say that and, um, with massive respect and um, you know transparency because not everything you're gonna do is gonna become a success. I've yeah. tried to run many businesses that failed in the social media and fitness space, but yeah. many that also were successful. But my cod, but my, my podcast flopped. So I don't know. It gave me a sour test. I might try again in a few years. See how I go for flops. I'm just gonna fucking not try with the podcast, but. I do want to do other things, man. And I'm seeing all these influencers like doing like ghost tours or like t- test taste testing food, like, and they're in a particular industry, but they venture out of the industry and they do other things. Yeah. It's like, I'm this bodybuilder and now I'm going to like Thailand to try exotic foods. Yeah. You're like, or that I'm this dumb. bodybuilder and I've never been to a party or a festival. You're not a party guy, right? Not at all. Imagine you make videos like that. It's like, all right, I'm Bradley Martin. I've always been like a serious guy, bodybuilding, businessman. But I'm going to get high as fuck. But now I want to get fucked up and I want to party Dude, with Greg Doucet and Chespra. That might be a fucking video. Oh my God. Getting high as fuck on Molly with oh Greg Doucet and Chespra. <laughs> that would be Bro, something else. That would go fucking crazy. Cunts would be like, this is the weirdest but coolest combo I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. It would be the weirdest so strange and so weird. But Who are these people? I think people will like it. Because they so wouldn't weird. expect like us to like be doing that. I'd be like, whoa, shit. You guys so we need been- us, but we need a few of the younger guys too. Of course. That's, that's what super, it'll go crazy. I, I like that you said that. And yeah. I think, and that's what I respect about you, Bradley. I like the fact that you bring these young and upcoming dudes. It's like, it's like, go ahead. it's like you feel like you're their father. Damn. Yeah, it's true. And you want to make sure they're going on the right path. Yeah, you want well, to, you want, sure want to, suck. you want to drip feed them just a little bit, but not too much. You know, you want to. Yeah just a little bit enough for them to kind of see the light, but not enough for them to get tainted by it all and not enough for them to become spoiled little brats so that they work and they get, get theirs. And, and I feel like it's like, you feel like it's your responsibility. I have some good kids and I have some bad kids. Oh, we all have bad kids. I got, I got good ones and bad. I got ones calling me from Miami. It's like, man, I'm at a party now. I've dropped fucking three mile in some X. I'm about to die, dude. I just want to say that I love you. I love Ziz and I love everything you guys have done for that. I'm like, dude, I'm like, no. I'm like, Joe. I'm like, stop fucking doing drugs. Get back in the fucking gym. Drink some water too. I'm like, drink some water and make sure you get a good eight to 10 hours of sleep. Call me in the morning if you still want to kill yourself. Yeah, I don't. don't Most of the time, they're still around. All the time, actually. No one's killed themselves. Yeah. Good, good. Knock on wood. Good. That's not wood. This is Give me some wood. Yeah, yeah. We got you right here. Yeah, there you go. Solid. I think the ayahuasca really helped you. I I really got to get this shit. No, it did, dude. Oh my God. Changed my life, bro. Yeah, that's not... That's not... (laughs) Does it look like that? (laughs) Like, you're stupid. No, it doesn't look yeah. like that. It's the nastiest you like shit. Humor. Bro, it's like this <laughs> it's rancid fucking like, it's not good. It's like a, just What's imagine. What's it look like? I always a, pictured it's like a fucking plant and it's just. You no, it is a plant, but it's. smoke it somehow. I it's like boiled know. down to like a liquid, like a, like a shot. Drink it. Like a brown shot. It's horrible tasting. What's it, what's it taste like? What can it's you describe like it? It's like a very bitter taste. Like no, no, f- no, sh- no. Yeah, not even that. Like a. Like you know Did what? You Jager? Try G- Did you try it, boss? Okay. No, no, no. He's too afraid. <laughs> not ready for that. Not, he's not ready. It's How old like are you? A, huh? How old are you? Twenty-three. Yeah, not 23. too young. No, no, Imagine no, no, no. like a like a <laughs> Jaeger, but like completely viscous and like molasses Jaeger and like motor oil or some shit. Like it just doesn't taste good. Oh my god! So but like basically like petrol kind of. Yeah, it's t- it's garbage. But it's 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 a, it's incredible. It'll Damn. change your life. All right. Yeah. Chesty tries ayahuasca in end of August with uh, yeah, Bradley Martin. Yeah, coming soon. We're gonna <laughs> fucking try fucking ayahuasca. But I, oh I want to say, man, I appreciate you coming on. Hey, man, uh, thank you for having me in such a short notice. Yeah, hell yeah. It was. Yeah, I man. saw you and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Yeah. And, and and you told me that, and I honestly just genuinely didn't know, and I didn't. That's mean cool, any, man. Any disrespect? Yeah, no, 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 no. None taken. Um, when you're secure with yourself, like those the things don't really matter. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's I think it's cool as fuck, and, and hopefully some someday everyone gets to know the truth because I I I'm, I'm really interested. I'm gonna ask you off camera. Oh yeah, I can't wait to tell you. Um, yeah. sorry but, guys. Yeah, Sorry, it's coming soon. I you promise. guys gotta wait for that. Maybe not soon, but it, it'll come one day. I just understand my position. Thank yeah, you. at some point. But subscribe to the channel, uh, podcast on iTunes, on Spotify, on YouTube. Give this video a like. A like if you liked it. Obviously.
obviously just like it anyways and uh check out all your socials what do you have tell them um my instagram is at said it's spelled like said s-a-i-d underscore yeah. segevich i'll give you the links and all that jazz yeah yeah um, and my clothing website that I run is subversionfitness.com. Thanks, Bradley. And Absolutely. I, again, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for your hospitality. And I want to say thank you to everyone that I've had an opportunity with in America. You guys have treated me really nicely and welcomed me with open arms, all the yeah. events, all the people at the Fitness Expo. And you're a sound bloke. And I uh, just know I got your back, man. And uh, I hope you, this can uh, form into a little bit of a friendship, man. Absolutely. Don't worry, I ain't going to try to fuck you. No, it's okay. Maybe just fuck. like later tonight. I don't know. Nah, so. it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> they all, they, he might, he might, uh, no, I won't, I won't die <laughs> you, dude. Sorry, sorry. No, I appreciate you. Man. Easy, G. You're a good one, huh? Oh, give me a hug. Give me a hug.